Beautiful. All right. We are live and I'm with Rodolfo. How are you today, my friend? Very well. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. I, I got to admit, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. You know, usually I start with uh, the question around like where we first met. And I think the truth is, is we probably first met not too long ago, like actually on Zoom. It was probably just a few days ago. However, however, your reputation does precede you. And I've known about you for many, many years. And we're going to get to kind of like the, the law Bitcoin conference and how you've been, you know, really monumental in, in, in Latin America with that. Uh, and so before we do, the man behind all of this, right? Rodolfo, what, what, what is your, very, very curious, uh, my friend, what, what is your story? Uh, you know, I, and, and, you know, I, I treat Bitcoin as a bit of a singularity. I think a lot of us were impacted, transformed a bit by, by when we first learned about it. So really curious about what's your story before Bitcoin? And when I say before, I don't mean like six months before. Some people start with their parents meeting. Some people start with their diapers. Some people start with their first job. So you go wherever you want. But I'm really curious, what, what was kind of your story um, yeah, growing up, where, where are you from and all that? I've always been involved, involved in somehow in technology, never been developer, stuff like that. My, my parents had this uh, in 1992, yes, or even before they had these computer uh, lessons. Now they, they gave, they, they had this, this institution where you could learn with talent and Commodore Yes, to work on computers. And I always been involved somehow with computers. Um, then on my, I, I start, I decided to study advertising. Yes. And during that period, I was also working in Ernst and Young. And I, 1997, during the dot com bubble, uh, I had plans of creating my own uh, project. And the project, in 1997 was called Bitcoins. Yes. The, the name of the project was called Bitcoins World Wide Web eCash. No uh, way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so in the year 2000, I, I finished the university in 1998. Yes. But in the year 2000, I had to do my thesis, something like that. Mm -hmm. And I decided also to use the project like a thesis. Um, so I registered the domain, bitcoins.com. Mm. And since then, it, I, I did register some other domains. Yes, in, more related to Spanish. One was like budget.com, but in Spanish, .com.ar. And tour guide, visita guiadas, yes, which is tour guides in Spanish. But those, I let them drop. <laughs> These were projects that I did not plan to keep them going, while Bitcoin, or bitcoins uh, was something that I would have loved to do once when I had time, obviously, to do that. And, and it was like a multi, um, like the air miles, yes, but more related to digital industry. At that time, I remember thinking about the diskettes, stuff like that. No, it's like that old time, yes, mm. talking with the Bakar and, uh, and that kind of brands. Uh, so it had to do, bitcoins was like, beat the smallest unit in digital and coins like the account uh, like, like the account on the on the, on the economic aspect so you know i i kept the domain it's the only domain i had and almost every year i would say every year i had to repay the domain it's not that i had it like okay 20 years from forward no i every year i had to pay for the domain and and it was the only one i decided to keep in I must have stopped looking around 2008, I guess. <laughs> uh, but I just paid. But someone in 2011 wrote me wanting to buy the domain. Um, and he did a big effort in trying to find me because where I had it posted, yes, um, I, I, I was like unreachable. That email was not mine anymore. So, so when I decided, well, I meant when I can send it, I had to go into this platform, try to find where I had the, the domain posted as on sale. And, and when I got in, I found that I had already 40 offers for buying the domain. And, and the smallest one was big enough, much bigger than the one that this guy was offering me. So I told him that, and, and since long, no? 
So I told him that I, I wouldn't be selling and I started reading about Bitcoin. This was around 2011. The first years of 2011, you told me you, you jumped into Bitcoin at around 10. And, and this is eventually the same time, I guess it was April, March, April, 2011. And, and the first reason for going into Bitcoin was understanding what I had in my hands, yes, what, how much it could be valued. I was not a domainer. I don't know how much a domain could, could be valued. And, and it was not Bitcoin, it was Bitcoins, yes. Unfortunately, Bitcoin.com was, was bought in 2008. So I had these eight years to even buy Bitcoin.com if I wanted, but I only bought Bitcoins.com. So this is, I do not regret. It's just like, I, Part of the I story. <laughs> That's okay. Um, okay. But, you know, they, I, I, I started, understanding what it meant to be a domainer and, and how much time it had because at that time 2011 you was there it was not as easy as today to understand about bitcoin to read about bitcoin to read good things about bitcoin to read uh, philosophical aspects about bitcoin to read uh, i mean to deeply understand bitcoin beyond the few things you could read in, in articles or, or newspapers talking bad things about Bitcoin. No, I mean, uh, you you just started in those times. You said, well, but I, I am like supporting also drugs. I'm supporting this. It, it, I mean, you had to create your own understanding that this was beyond all that you could read. And but it took me around three, four months reading and understanding and, and connecting to people and, and and people willing to buy me the domain and actively buy me the domain. And I, was, I had talks with Trade Hill, I had talks with uh, Empty Gox, yes. And finally, Empty Gox did a good offer, yes. And I sold the domain to Marc Arpeles, which then, it, but we all know the story of Empty Gox, yes, blame it on Empty Gox, the sound. Um, <laughs> yesterday I was looking for that song, I don't know why, but um, if, if you haven't read it, heard it before, you should just take a look at, in YouTube. Uh, and well, <clears throat> I sold it to him and the day I sold the domain to, to Mark, the guys from Trade Hill that they knew I was, I was uh, dealing also with Mark because they were bidding on me. <laughs> Uh, the day after, or two days after, they said that they had the domain bitcoin.com. Yes, they had rented the domain bitcoin.com. So it was like a slash for, for Mark. Yes, Mark was saying, hey, I have bitcoins.com. <clears throat> and the other was saying, yes, I have bitcoin.com. So this is, um, and now the domain, it's one of the assets that should be, I guess it is not being, it has not been added, yes. But it should be added to the assets that MTGOS has in his in, in his domain. Yes, for the for the this uh, uh, bankruptcy bankruptcy issue. No, I mean it is a good asset. Bitcoins.com. Absolutely interesting. I didn't even know that. Okay, so so so, so Mount Cox's whole settlement thing is, is it's sitting on it now. Interesting, interesting. Okay, okay. So, what a start to the story. Uh, so, what happened here? So, we're in twenty what now? Twenty eleven. You said twenty twelve. You sold it to him. Twenty eleven. Twenty eleven. Okay, and then, uh, so what? What happens next? I, I guess I did what most people did at that time, beyond understanding, reading, believing. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I was not going under. I, I was not having a very good economic situation, yes. I never been bad, yes, but it was not my, my best time. I, 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 had, I got married like a few years before and family and, and my own business, which was running a school, uh, was going under some pressures and stuff like that. So, so it was like a savior somehow, yes, having Bitcoins at that moment. Uh, it helped me a bit uh, during that time, and and I did some trading. Yes, I I 
enjoyed doing, doing trading during the first year. And then I started, I, I kept doing for a few years, you know, but, but I started like, like feeling the pressure, like, come on, I, I want to really be unable to sleep and unrestful because of this and, and concern. So, so around 2013, I think I, I decided to stop really focusing on, on my value, yes. And I decided I should just give out, give, give back. This is the concept I, I usually use and I, I really feel, yes. It's like, it's why me? Why I had bitcoins.com? Why? I mean, it's, it's one in a trillion. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's really the lottery ticket, yes. And why I, I had the lottery ticket? So, so I, I'm a grateful guy. I, I, I believe, actively believe, I build my life around being around grateful. Yes. So, so I, I think that being grateful means to be willing to do something for someone else because you're grateful for it. Yes. And I could not be grateful, I mean, beyond God, if you believe in God. <clears throat> Being grateful with God somehow means being grateful with whatever it has to do around you because, <laughs> because I can, unless I'm saying, yes, thanks God, thanks God every day, being really grateful means doing something. And my doing something was trying to help others to have the opportunity I had. And so I started the Argentinian NGO. Uh, it's uh, a group of people who need to do that. And since then, I started several other non-for-profit projects with the same concept around trying to help people to understand about this. No? Obviously, at the beginning, people would think that I was doing this for getting value from, out from it. And, and yes, so if you get adoption, Bitcoin price, never, ever had that in my mind. Yes, I never, ever cared about that. I only thought that it would be good to help others to, to understand what I understood. And it really changed my mind. No? It, it's around 2013, after being in a trading and a, and a, and a money focus, uh, it, it started to change me, my mind, my way of understanding stuff. And, and I started to be like an active promoter, an active philosopher, if you want. Yes. I, mm in the way of Andreas, no? uh, and a big advocate of the technology. Mm. What a beautiful uh, like beginning. But you know, I'm curious about one thing is you also mentioned that you're from Argentina. Uh, so curious kind of, you know, even maybe before learning about, you know, the Bitcoin white paper and all that, like what your lens of money was and, you know, kind of your relationship with it. Was it, did you ever think about it much? Or was it just something that never. Uh, once you got into Bitcoin, you started thinking about it more never. or was it? Never, ever. Never. I was the guy who thought 100 bill is a 100 bill. You don't need to ask anything else. It's 100 mm -hmm. pesos. Why it is 100 pesos? <laughs> I don't know, it's just 100. Mm. It's, and what it means to have a bill of 100 and what it means about printing, I never ever thought about okay. this kind of stuff. And I think it's almost the 85, 90% of the people in the world. They just don't think yep. about money because people don't need to think about that. They, they live, they, they've been living today without thinking about that and they, they suffer some stuff and they don't realize it has to do with the money. So, so they just don't focus on understanding this kind of concept. Mm. But actually it's like mind blowing and, and mind opening. Yes, when you start understanding the origin of value, I give talks about the origin of value and, and not of value in an economic sense, of value in any sense. Why I value my relation with my wife, why I value what, where evolution comes from. Yes, I, I have a talk called Decentrology, which talks about evolution and has to do somehow with efficiency and value and stuff like that. So it, it really mind opens you understanding this beyond the superficial aspects of fiat, currency and, and value. But yes, this was after coming into it. So really I was already... 
So your main interest, Rodolfo, then stemmed from the fact that you owned Bitcoins.com and then you felt like there was a bit of an ass, it could be worth something. Was, 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 like, but I'm just wondering, like, was there, I mean, like you kind of went, um, you know, you sold it, it changed your life. But I'm curious, like what, what, at what point was, or maybe it was a process where you were like, okay, this Bitcoin thing is, is good. Like I want to put my reputation. Cause like you said, it's not easy to, you know, get people together or whatever it is like doing events or, you know, awareness, whatever it is. It's like, there's a lot of reputational risk. You have to put your money into it, your time, energy. So uh, I'm just curious, like, was there like a leap of faith at one point where you were like, no, 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 this is, this is more than just me making a little bit of money on the side. This, this could, you know, maybe change the world. This was around 2013 when I decided to go into this. And Actually, you need to understand also the, the space where you're doing things. It's not the same doing this in India, doing this in Buenos Aires, doing this in US. Yes, it's, it's every country is different and every country has its own concerns. Yes, and being open in one place is not the same being open in Venezuela than being open in Argentina or being open in Australia. Yes. Uh, open about what you think, about what you want to defend. Yes, this is, is something relevant. And let me put you a, a, a scene of what was Argentina at that time. Yes. And we had, it, when I did this in 2013, we, we were like, there, there, was a, there was a platform called uh, Coin. I don't remember, it was a legal platform, yes. And we had these very few countries where it was legal or illegal, yes, uh, bit, and you had this red and green map. I don't know if you remember, but it's like Bitcoin legal. That finally it was bought by, by this guy. I don't remember. Well, uh, sorry, don't, don't remember. Um, so in that time, it was very hard about Bitcoin. Everybody was harsh about Bitcoin. And Bolivia, Bolivia, a small country that has no weight in there, but they decided to go formally against Bitcoin. Yes, like legally abiding people from saying they were Bitcoin from whatever had to do with Bitcoin. 2013, 14, eventually. Yeah, no, 2013. And, and my country, yes, was uh, in hands of Cristina Fernandez, and she was very like nationalist, yes, and, and she had this thing that we call um, CEPO, where you couldn't buy dollars, yes. You couldn't buy dollars, obviously you have the black market and the white market, yes. Being the black, the only natural market and the white the only fake market. No, I, there was a talk of Andreas in, in La Bitcoin about the black being the good and the white being the bad, usually, yes? Uh, but when, that, that's another uh, thing. So um, the only way of getting to dollars was through the black market and mm. it was yeah, like illegal, yes, to buy dollars. In, Obviously, mm. in the market and getting lost from somewhere else and getting money into the country was impossible. I mean, you could, but all those dollars that came into the country were sold in the central bank and you got the wide market value. So eventually, you was uh, doing something for $200, yes, in US, but when you brought them to Argentina, that meant $70. Yes, because when you turn that into pesos and with that you wanted to buy the dollars and you need to pay your, your people, yes, it was like 70 in real dollars. So Bitcoin was being used, actively used, for some to have a way of buying dollars, yes, a way of going into a complementary store of value, not being the pesos, yes, the only one, plus some, some hotels around 600 at that time. Yes, used a platform to get paid in credit card in US or outside. Yes, with that money, this platform bought Bitcoins and they sent Bitcoins to the hotels in Buenos Aires. Yes, and the hotels sold the Bitcoins in the, in the market. So, so we've had a, a big flow of Bitcoins at that time. And eventually 
having a bit of the price in Argentina against other places, not because there are a big amount of people trying to get the full value of the Bitcoin and not just the dollar price white value. Um, so, so talking about Bitcoin was not very well seen, seen and I thought that someone should be willing to put its face to it, should be willing to defend this beyond the accusations of being a way of moving money and going behind the, the symbol. And um, so I, I, I never care, actually I never care about myself, I don't care about being, I don't care about being a public face, I really, I just, someone that wants people, wants things to be done, not, not being recognized for doing the things, it's just, I want someone to put the face. So, so that was the idea, I mean, putting a face into this and putting, at that time, you had lots of people, lots of dormants trying to talking with people, and they eventually would, would talk with someone that just started in this and had a not a full understanding of the blockchain. And at that time, we didn't talk about blockchain as blockchain. We talk about bitcoins being three things: small b, it was the bitcoin, the, the bitcoin database; big b was the bitcoin asset, and bitcoin dot. Version one was a Bitcoin core. No? Everything was Bitcoin at that time. Uh, but, but we understood, or me and, and a group of people, we understood what could be come out from Bitcoin. So we wanted to have some bridge between institutions, government institutions and newspapers that wanted to talk with an institution that could represent somehow Bitcoin. No? And at that time, it was also hard because people didn't want to be represented. I mean, Bitcoin Argentina NGO, come on, why Bitcoin Argentina? Why are you putting that name? You represent all of us just because, yes. So, so this was also an issue. Yes, understanding Bitcoin that time is not the same as understanding it today. Yes, doing things in 2011, 12, 13, 14, it's not the same as doing things today. So, so even having an NGO there, so that was like, the community could not be could, could be not supported, but we were very open. We were uh, always giving a good, uh, like like talking from the good part, no. So we also decided to do the first conference in Latin America, La Bitconf, which is being hosted since next Monday, um, and it's the longest running conference in the world, yes, since 2013. The only one that kept the name Bitcoin in it since its beginning. And, and that is also an issue. Keeping the word Bitcoin is not easy. Doing a conference with the word Bitcoin is not easy. You won't get government support. You won't get the IBM. You won't, I mean, actively saying no because of that. No? You won't get a center. You won't get uh, any big company in the moments where Bitcoin is a bad word. Yes, because you have these cycles of good and bad word. Bitcoin is a good word, but it goes up, 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 up. Everybody likes Bitcoin, but it goes down. Empty gogs and, 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 and drugs and stuff like that, blah, blah, blah. then it's a bad word and no one's want to be related to it, yes? And then it's blockchain, 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 blockchain. No one wants to talk about Bitcoin. Blockchain is a good thing, Bitcoin is a bad thing, but then it goes to 17 and everybody wants to talk about Bitcoin. Yes, and then it's a bad word again because the ICOs and the, so keeping the word Bitcoin it's, it's hard. hard and it's a decision. It's a it's a it's it's like a statement. Yes, and with the mm. NGO Bitcoin Argentina NGO, no blockchain Argentina, no whatever. Yes, and we did it with the conference also. So so I me and my team we are very into supporting. Bitcoin statement, yes, that a currency is real, it's relevant to a blockchain, to a blockchain's um, decentralized uh, trust, yes, like a monetary, not only blockchain, so, so not, that, that's a bit our story. Yeah, yeah, no, I was going to say is, is that on the, like, so I, 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 whenever I tell anyone my Bitcoin story, I always tell people about meetups, events, and those things, because events are where the rubber meets the road. And I have just so much respect for people who are willing to put their neck on the line, because I, I know personally firsthand that 
they're not money makers, <laughs> you know, and but but the second order effects of of doing events where people are like, oh my God, I got a job because of your event. Oh my God, I met my business partner because of your event. Oh my God, I got to learn about it and you know, finally got into Bitcoin. There's just so many other like feel good moments that come out of it. It's, it's almost hard to describe. And so, so, so good on you, man, Rodolfo. I, and, and you kept Bitcoin at the heart of it. I'm not gonna lie. I, my, one of my goals in, in Toronto when I was doing them was I wanted to bring in as many bankers and fintech people because there's a lot of them in Toronto. So I renamed my events to Fintech Canada. And then I would stack my events with Bitcoiners. <laughs> and it was a bit, you know, maybe ingenuous, but my, my goal was always to just bring as many eyeballs into this. But the fact that you didn't swerve and you kept kind of in that lane, I think is very respectable. So, so good on you. So, so I just so curious. So how did, I mean, I, I saw your lineup. You've got now like the who's who all speaking at your next event. And by the way, what is the date on that? Um, just so people know. December 7th. It's the, December 7th. And it goes from the 7th to 11th. <clears throat> And anybody can join, or is it just for people in Latin America, or what's the what's the kind of the the time, the time frame? We are doing a very short content, it's three mm. hours per day, and and the hour is not the best hour for Argentina. Yes, it's like from one o'clock uh, p.m. to four o'clock. Yes, and and that hour is like suitable for U.S. and and Latin America, and for Europe. So so we decided to put it in a time frame that fits everyone yes um, so this that, that's why so it's, it's actually it's a global conference it is thought like this like this um, we have like two tracks yes labicons has always been like a very um, crypto crypto conference no it's it's like this is one of the things that happens. I, I do not invite, I don't have uh, the blockchain people that everybody knows. And I don't have the IBM guy and the founder of, I don't know, these names that industry knows about. Yes, other mm. industries knows about. I have the names that the Bitcoin industry knows about. I have right. Andreas, I have Adam Back, Nick Sabo, mm. Satoshi Nakamoto even. Um, I, I, so, so it's, those kinds of names that as community we care, yes, but for setting the conference outside of the community is like, and who is him? Yes. So, <clears throat> so this is the way Labitcon always ran. And this year we had these two tracks, this English track, fully English track with 3D animated also talks and stuff like that. And I you know later. Um, more for the crypto audience, yes, philosophy and monetary and, and, and enjoying listening Max Kaiser shouting and, and spitting bad words and, and enjoying <laughs> and on layer two with Adam Back and, and Lightning. And so it's like, it's that kind of content, uh, content for three days, for five days. And then we have a Spanish version of the conference, which is not a translation. We have it only in Spanish with complementary content, more eventually introductory, yes, but like basics on um, smart contracts, basics on uh, technical aspects of Bitcoin, yes, uh, how to program, how to do programming in Solidity, uh, or same topics that are being discussed in English, but with other speakers in Spanish, like CDBCs, D DeFi, and stuff like that. So, so that's the concept, we have these two going uh, panels, uh, tracks, because they don't compete for the audience. It's like different audience, yes? Nice. In the, um, in, 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 uh, so everyone can join. It's 100% free. Uh, beautiful. And, and they, is, is it, they go to lawbitconf.com uh, or is it? Uh, Bitconf.com, which is live Latin American Bitcoin conference, yes, um, dot com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, okay. So one question I've been meaning to ask you, Adolfo. So one of the things that I, I and, and you know, I missed one of your conferences. I think the one in Colombia by like a week or something. I was in there because my my wife is is from Bogota, and Sorry. and I always think about it. I'm like, oh, I really wish I'd gone to that because the number of people 
that not just say how good your conferences are, but also the number of people that say how much fun they had at your conference. Can you talk a little bit about that? Like, or is that like secret? <laughs> Cause every, everyone talks about how they're just like a riot. <laughs> um, well, actually there is a motto, no? In, which is the motto which drives doing the conference, which is, it's not, ju not just a conference, it's a whole experience. This is the, the motto. Yes, and you don't, you just read it as a motto. When you read it, you understand it when you leave it. Yes, it's when you leave, leave. I know it's, it's a good word in English. Yeah, but, I know what you mean. Mm -hmm. but, um, the thing is that I it's not just a conference. It's not just having Adam and Andreas or, or, or Nick. Yes, it's not just about how fun Brock is speaking and, and speaking, yes. It's a very high quality content, but what we do is we focus a lot in the culture, in the in the local, not in the culture, in the experience around the conference. I have like, did you ever hear Stomp? Yes, Stomp is. I have like these shows that, like you see, people banging computers and stuff like that, and doing this. The show where I have this, we in, in Uruguay we we went walking ten blocks with a full um, uh, the guys in the carnivals. I don't remember the, the name. Parade, yes, carnival parade, and stopping all the cars and, and we all dancing, parading, and and police and <laughs> didn't care. All outfit with costumes and and singing songs and it it's it's like. Strange. It's, it's special. It's an experience. We had a, a, a show of of a very well known uh, singer like uh, I, right now I don't remember the names. Yes, but but everybody dancing with him, and and then we 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 do uh, rafting in Chile, and we do we went to a to a salt mine uh, to a church inside a salt mine in Colombia. And I've been to that one, by the way. That's super yeah. cool. Oh, I wish I, I wish I could have gone with you guys. <laughs> kind of stuff. It's like, like, yeah. What the fuck? Yes. Uh, and, and yeah. That's the experience. That's actually the experience ticket. Yes. If you go, this is. I mean, you can go to the conference, or you can get the ticket. And if you get the ticket, you do this with these other cool people. Yes. And, and you sit in the table in a spontaneous talk, not in a business talk. This is the thing. The big coffee is not a good business spot. It's not that you go and do business. You might, but you will do relations. You will mm -hmm. build relations. And based on those relations later, you will do business. So, and, and, and Rodolfo, how are you going to capture? Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Are you no, going to no, say no, something? No, 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 I was curious is how are you going to now, um, you know, capture some of that, that in, in what you're going to be doing later next week in terms of, I know you showed me some glimpses into, I don't know if, if you're even open to showing some of those commercials, but, uh, uh, but, but, uh, but just curious, like how you're, how you're planning to capture that, that energy in a more virtual form. We sort of understood that, that we can try to replicate what's going offline, yes trying to do booth and that booth being useful, uh, I don't see it. Trying to do uh, networking, like real networking, it's not the same. Try, so, so we decided if we go online, we, we do it different. I mean, the experience, it, now it's an online experience. It's not like the experience of getting in contact with Carlitos, no, no. no. Now, they, they not just an co online conference, it's an ex online experience, yes? So the, the venue is on the moon, yes? We also have a party in the moon, and, and everything is related to this moontastic... Love uh, it. <laughs> moontastic look, yes? And, okay. and, and, and very Bitcoin, like very, very Bitcoin support. It's like people says, why the moon? Other people, yes? But we understand this. So, so, and, and we created, we, we created 10 talks, no, six talks of, of well known people like Max and Stacy, Jim Song, James Allop, um, Giacomo Soko, Suko, Ali Kanani from, from Africa, 
and CZ from, from Binance, yes? We recreated six of those talks, uh, 10 minute talks in, into a fully 3D avatarized uh, content, yes? With animations, stuff like that. And it, it's very, very, very fun. To, some of them are very fun. Some of them are, are very well shown. No, it's like a beautiful, beautiful experience to see. Like, like one hour of content of these animated characters that we somehow all know. Yes, made in, in 3D. It's it's also special. It's a special thing. But then it will be a regular event, a regular online event with talks. With we have a very nice one. I just I just finished. Uh, setting it up, which is all this, but all this, yes, as we usually have these big speakers of the industry coming coming to, to the space in, in, in whatever country we do it, yes, we change from country to country, we do it in Colombia, Mexico, Venezuela, well, Venezuela no, uh, Argentina, etc., to make it a different experience for those who come. So the speaker is always willing to come back, not be only because a good experience, but because it's a new country, yes. So, but in, in, in this year we're having like this all this very all this but all this in the industry like Mark Charlie Shrem, yes. We have um, Anthony Diorio. We'll have Eric Borges and Rob Pierce, yes. Like in a all this but all this, and and this is like a fireside chat interview of that kind of stuff. And who cares? Like it's not that you will get content. It's, just nice. It's nice to to do it and to have it. Um, so 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 this is how it's thought. I mean, the conference is something that we need to like. It's not commercial. Yes, even though we have sponsors, we consider sponsor supporters more than sponsors. And you can't pay to talk. Yes, it's eventually you might be talking because the content, your concept, your topic. Yes could be related to some panel, so you might be in a panel. But it's not that you pay, hey, if I want to be this, I can talk now. I don't care. I really don't care. Mm. Mm. And, and what, what would you say, like, what does success look like for you for this conference? Just uh, maximizing on, on, like I said, I, I don't see many conferences where people actually say they have fun because usually it's just like a bit, you know, dry and heavy and, and boring. But uh, what is, I guess, uh, I, I got to admit, I'm, I'm pretty pumped about it. Uh, I'm, I'm excited. I, I want to make sure we, we do a good job of at least promoting this uh, in India and, you know, in Canada and then see if we can get a lot of people to, to come online with you. Hey, Rodolfo. Yeah, no, sorry, no, go no, ahead. Actually, I'll, even if you don't come to the conference, because we there mm. sitting down two hours. Yeah. Uh, at least I think that everybody should join the, the party, the, the La Vid Moon party. Uh, so that is Saturday, when? Saturday? Saturday? I don't know yet the, the hour. Yes. But Saturday, if you have a beer helmet, great. If you don't, you just will be able to do beer from the computer. <laughs> okay cool love it love it um hey i was gonna ask you something have you do you know mauricio and abraham from venezuela have you ever met those guys uh, i think what well, they run a company running. called Ledit. <laughs> I don't know. yeah right okay I sorry it's a terrible so uh, terrible example <laughs> no i actually started doing my my this this whole podcast because i was inspired by by two gentlemen from venezuela who were uh, essentially persecuted uh, by the government and the Canadian government actually, you know, yeah, it's super sad. And and so when I heard their story, I, I think I'm pretty sure I cried because, you know, like th those, like the things that happen, um, you know, like getting rich, people all time high, ICO, blockchain, blah, blah, blah. That's all noise. But when you hear about like what people on the ground, how they used Bitcoin to kind of you know, rescue themselves. It's just, it's so touching, you know. We had a, a talk in Colombia, actually, from mm. a guy in Venezuela, and everybody was crying. Mm. He was crying, the people in the audience was crying, listening and, and, and touched by, by the Venezuelan situation, how Bitcoin was a, a tool for, for for being able to get drugs, not drugs, the, the, the drug, the, 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 the medical drugs, no? Medical uh, drugs. Mm. That, that some in the other ways they, they wouldn't have been able to, no? And, and really it's, 
in Venezuela, sometimes for, for several, it's like the survival tool. You know? it's, it's like a, if we weren't doing this, actually, my family wouldn't be able to, to keep uh, nothing. I mean, it's, it's like a survival tool. And really, if you listen to the stories of Venezuela, it's, it's impressive. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, it's, and those are the, those are the kind of stories that really, I don't know, touch my heart and, and make me wake up in the morning and feel so energized to keep doing, you know, what we're doing. It's not about necessarily replacing the US dollar or something like that. It's, it's more about just, you know, there are many countries where, ah, it's just scary. So, so to be able to give people a, an escape valve, um, you know, hope, um, why not? I think it's, uh, in one of my talks, uh, it has to do with the opt-out tool. No, it's like it's that. I think we are building opt-out tools. Uh, we actually it has to do with decentralization no? or, or centralization. Um, I think that centralization is natural. We will always go towards centralized spots. Yes, because it's more efficient. And efficiency it's part of the of the things that we seek because we need to survive as 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 beings, yes? So you need energy to, to live. So you will always go towards the most efficient, efficient proposal, yes? Because it's energy, energy saver, and it's natural. You will always go toward the most energy saving uh, spot, depending your 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 run, right? Is in the short term, the long term, I mean, you, you put your own, perspective of, of how much energy it will create. But but centralization, it's it's efficient. It's I don't need to be thinking about every single decision that my government needs to take or my if I will put uh, I don't know give to feed to the guy in, in Ushuaia in the other part of the country. I mean it's efficient. It's efficient to have a government. It's awful. It's it's it brings a lot of of bad things. Yes, but it's more efficient. So what you build here, I think what we are building with this decentralized ideas and, and all these tools that we have, it's always opt-out tools. I mean, you can have that, but you have an opting out and it's cheaper because that actually it's also the cost of opting out. It's always about efficiency, it's always about energy, but this is, <laughs> this is a talk. <laughs> yeah, no, no, before, no, before I got into Bitcoin, I, I, you're right, though, I, I always felt like my energy was always about, it was always rotating around what's not right in the world. There's this problem. There's that problem. Did you hear about this and the money supply and blah? But as soon as Bitcoin came into my life, when I read that white paper, it was like, it was like this moment where I, I could now, instead of focusing on what's wrong, I could focus on what's right. And it was like this complete shift in terms of my mentality and I just became happier and it's weird. That, actually that changed me, actively changed me. Yes, uh, you see me using a hat, you see me, uh, people in La Bitcoin, lots of people in La Bitcoin uses shoes of two different colors. Yes, there were two different shoes uh, in their feet. And this is something I, I spontaneously started because I like it. Yes, I like using two different colors. And and I realized, first I realized I liked it. Second, I realized I might not do it because people think it's wrong. And then I realized that it doesn't care. It doesn't matter if people think it's wrong. There's nothing wrong. Yes, if you really think it looks good. If you mm. really, there's absolutely nothing wrong. So it's not what people say. It's what you think and what you mean. Mm. And Bitcoin is exactly that story. It's the honey mm. you know? It's exactly that story. It's It's... When we are in this, like you, in 2011, you had hundreds and thousands of people telling you that you was wrong. Yes, telling you that you don't understand. Warren Buffett is saying it's wrong. Yes, all these dinosaurs. Yes, and Alan Greenspan says it's uh, and the, And you know more than this, I don't know whom. Yes, it's not about that. It's about what you believe. Yes, so... Bitcoin makes you believe in yourself, makes you create, create truth from what you can see, from what you can certify, not just from because it was there. Money does not have value because it has value. No, you, you go deep, you understand. You, if, if you really are a, 
active Bitcoiner, yes? That's why when, I, when people talk about maximalism, I don't feel myself a maximalist. I, I feel myself a thinker, uh, someone that reflects, that reflects, uh, I don't know in English, yes, but that, that thinks about things, yes, and, and that it's willing to, to debate the status quo, that it's willing to, so it's not maximalism, is that I think different than some people that comes with all these preconcepts. Yes. So, so I'm always open to discuss my new concepts, but it's like people is not ready to discuss. It's not ready. It's not, they haven't gone through the full process that lots of our, as maximalists, if you want to see them like that, like that have gone through. So, so true, so true. Um, hey, Rodolfo, so we, we've touched on a, a bit about your story. Obviously, there's, I'm sure, a lot more, right? I'll wait for the book someday that we touched on La Bitcoin and kind of, you know, I mean, again, if there's anything you want to share more on that front, would love to hear it. Um, but then now kind of, I guess, shifting gears to like the third part, which I was talking about is, is like more around like... Uh, so Bitcoin in itself is contrarian, right? It is contrarian. But I'm curious about your perspective... Wow. Contrarian means like, like what you just said, which is that you believe it, but everybody else, a thousand people are going to say, this is never going to work. But, you know, especially nine years ago, now I would say today with PayPal adopting it, this, 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 now it's becoming a little bit less contrarian, but it was super contrarian back in the day. So I guess my, my question is, is what is one truth that you hold today that most other Bitcoiners would disagree with you on? Do you know what I'm saying? So what is one thing that you believe that most others in Bitcoin, not maybe let's say crypto or blockchain, because you know, no. if you're, is there, is there is something that- I, I think that the whole concept of energy, like the, like the core of evolution and the core of, of the understanding of why this has, has sense. I think this is something that not necessarily everybody shares or understands or, or, or goes deep into that rabbit hole, yes. Um, but really understanding, I was not an energy guy, a, a yogi, nothing related to that. And that's not the kind of energy, though energy is everything, not that kind of energy they wanted to you know. It's, it's understanding the truth through the way we create value and what's the role of energy in that value? I think this is something I don't usually. What is the role of energy in that? So, no, I, I'm I'm definitely with you. But what what do you, what do you what is that? It's a longer talk. No, <laughs> let's, let me do short. Um, I, I even have there is a video, a little bit of video, yes, that sort of goes through the story of evolution of money related to energy. It's like a summary of of my writings about decentralization. This actually, um, but we evolve. To, I mean, things value. Yes, you you get value when something is useful, useful for something. Yes, so it's valuable. You something it's valuable when it fulfills some need. Yes, so when you fulfill a need, yes, this this is the utility. Of, of the thing, but then you have a cost, yes? And the cost for fulfilling that need, it's always weighed in the, in, in the value. You say, well, yes, that Coca-Cola would give me my, my basic need, my, my, or the Maslow pyramid, Maslow, Maslow pyramid no? of, of needs. Uh, so it fulfills that, but I need to walk 30 kilometers to get the Coca-Cola, the cost of, energy of getting that does not compensate the energy that I feel it will give me such a dream. No? So mm -hmm. you spontaneously do this energy equation, yes, of how much you mm -hmm. will get against how much you will spend, yes, but, but, and this is E minus, I mean, U minus C, yes, U, U minus cost, utility minus cost. But then, we're, what happens when we talk about Bitcoin and blockchain? What we are saying is that we can disrupt trust. 
Yes, this is the big disruption. It's not value. It's, not, it's trust. What's the role of trust in value? I don't. I value is always subjective. Yes, because I believe it will give me a certain utility, a certain amount of energy of saving energy, whatever. And I believe it will take some certain amount of cost. Yes. But I don't know. I won't go there because I, they might get me caught. Yes. So it's always a believing a how much you trust on these elements of the equation, how much you think it will give value, how much you think it will cost. Yes. So when we are building a new layer of trust, we are working straight into the value because now I, I lower my subjectivity of what will happen if I rent this car, because I know I can read in the smart contract what it happens. Yes, I can certify. So we change trust for certified certification. Yes, and this changes the value equation because we are lowering, yes, the, the risk. Everything in, 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 in regular economics, yes, you get offer, uh, demand, and risk. Yes, so, so the trust is this risk aspect, this is subjectivity, yes, between, between the elements. And, and we will always go towards the most efficient offer of value, the one that gives you more energy in exchange for the less amount of effort. Yes, and this is how we evolve, this is why we use a cell phone and not five things, different elements in my bag, yes. And I don't need a bag anymore, and because it's more efficient, it's more energy efficient. Yes, just going with everything together and remembering it's. I just take my cell phone and let's see. Then we have my card. And it's like obviously we have a cell phone and we have a card in the cell phone, and now we have the the camera in the cell phone. It's all obvious, but the reason we go towards that obviousness because it's more efficient. It's more energy saving. And saving energy allows us to use that energy to do other stuff that eventually will give us more energy. So it's it's all related somehow to the energy, yes. But the thing is that talking and thinking about this is like, oh come on, are we really talking about energy? Are we really going to go to talk about um, these kind of things? It's like, let's talk about money. Let's talk about um, finer stuff. Yes. But I, I really like the philosophical, uh, the econo economy philosophical part of, of Bitcoin and of value and all, 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 all of this, yes. So this is something I actively talk about, but I don't think that most people went through that hole yet. Mm. Or, uh, yeah. Um, this is super fascinating. Um, no, I had a friend of mine, like before I started the Bitcoin journey, like 15 years ago, I had a friend of mine who told me that phrase. She, she was like, Sunny, Bitcoin, I mean, not Bitcoin, it wasn't invented. She said, money is the energy. And that threw me for a spin. I, I couldn't quite figure out what she meant, but uh, I, I totally believe that statement to be true. And, uh, and, and again, I, I'm probably not so good at quantifying why I believe that, but it was very interesting to hear your perspective. Um, you know, lately, Rodolfo, I've been also thinking about it in terms of like time. Um, you know, before I, and maybe there is a relationship between energy and time, right? Uh, I forget what it might be, but, but I also think in terms of time in the sense that before, when I was stuck in the fiat world, I felt like a hamster on a wheel. I felt like there was more month than money at the end of every month. I felt like no matter how hard I worked and how smart I could be, I could never get ahead in life because of all the pieces that were stacked up against me. When I discovered Bitcoin, it was like this weird, amazing kind of switch where the hands of time, instead of like getting away from me, I felt like I was literally gaining more of it as time went on because, um, you know, because of the decentral, not decentralization, but the uh, the fact that it's, you know, um, what's, sorry, what's the word? Uh, oh my God, the, the fact that it's uh, deflationary and that there's only so 21 million of them and and all of that just made me feel that uh, you know, that I don't know that I didn't feel like stressed anymore. And I just felt more like at peace and I could do things like spend time with my wife or my kids or, you know, the, with the heavy bag or go for a swim and oh, be present in that moment. 
I'm yes. sorry? All of, that, all of that has to do with the concept of energy. Yes. Mm. Of, of how much how much energy you get from being with your wife and your kids against being working all day. And, you know, it, 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 this is the energy concept behind you know? But but you're absolutely right. Actually, in my talk, when I talk about the utility, utility is this Maslow pyramid. But when I talk about effort or cost, it's it's a, a dice with three sides. Yes, time, money, effort. The three are exactly the same. Yes, because you need time, time to fulfill tasks. Yes, and that time, if, if, if you put it in the balance, how much time it will take me to, and that's amount of energy. Yes, because it's effort during a certain amount of time. When you, and, and that time gives you the chances of creating more in the same time, more value with this than with this other. So time is one of the elements of the equation. Money is the second element of, 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 of the equation. Why? Because mining, money needs to be a good store of value. What means value? The chances of, of fulfilling some need, yes? So money, it's the way you store the past energy, yes, into something that keeps the energy. Otherwise, I work today and it's gone, it's gone, yes? The only way of storing my effort that I did today is putting it on an asset that is being able to trade later, because otherwise effort just goes when it's done. Yes, so you create things and money and any other kind of asset. I do an art, I did the effort and spend the time for it. Yes, but if, but the art itself contains, it does not contain that effort at that time because that's my time and my understanding of how much effort I want. Then it gets from the other side to see how valuable for them is, how much of the willing to give it for that. No, it's not that, it's not the, the uh, Marxist aspect of, of work gives value. No, no, no. Work could give no value to others. It always give value to you, at least, as yes, doing the things. But the, the time, the money, and the, and the physical effort, or the effort, or mental effort, that you put into this are all the same elements in the cost when you consider energy. Yes, they are all related to energy. Because Fascinating. saves yeah. you energy. Having money saves me the energy of doing a car myself. Yes, it saves me that energy. Mm. I have the money to do that. So someone mm. that does this in a in a process line, yes, mm. don't spend as the same amount of energy I would do it. Mm -hmm, yes. mm -hmm. So money, time, and and mm. physical mental effort are all the same elements in this. So fascinating. You know, you know, what got me kind of started in this money thing too is, is like, I used to find it fascinating that almost if you go to any room, you go walk into a party, you just mention the word money and everybody will just, their ears will perk up and they'll just start listening and they'll start. But when you ask people, what is money? What is this thing that you wake up in the morning, go to sleep late at night, get into divorces, get into world wars, go to school for half your life? Like, what is this thing? Just define it for me. To this day, almost everybody gives a different definition. And I just find it remarkable that as a world, you know, we haven't, there's this one thing that universally, it's not religion, it's not politics, it's not, you know, skin color or language. It is literally money. That is like the one thing that kind of drives society forward, yet almost unanimously, nobody has asked the question of like, what is it? And so I think the fact that you're talking about it is super cool. Yes, actually, it's not money. Money is just a tool. Hmm exchanging value but most yes the evolution and, and, and society and every single society did they traded something they do for something some other one does that's the core of it and money is a good tool for it it's not money itself it's actually i would trade with you something yes without money if we if what i do and what you do are just compatible in, in, in time, in effort, and in value from you or from my side, yes? But money is just a tool that eventually, and usually, yes, becomes the best way of trading my effort than before, yes? Me feeding the pork during 
10 days, yes, to give you a bulk today. So uh, this asset is just an asset that you trade, you easily trade, but it's not that money is in everything. No, what is in everything is the need of trading value. And why? Because I always need to fulfill stuff. Yes, fulfill my needs. So I will trade someone that makes me more efficient fulfilling the need than doing it myself. So, so that's what's in the core of what every evolution had. And there are two aspects very relevant in this evolution. First, communication. Yes, every single human being and every single thing, you know, the active thing, needs to communicate. Yes, we need to tell the other one what we need. We, we, we do it because we need to tell the other what we need, yes, what we think or what we want. So we need to communicate, but we also need to trust on the other thing, on what is being given to me, what is shown, yes. The brand of something has value because it's trust. It's a summary of trust, yes. So we are fighting one of these two big elements in every single human relation, internet, change the way we communicate. Yes, it seemed as an easy thing, uh, just a nerd thing in 1984 when it was in this, yes, but today it's everything, yes. It was just changing the way we communicate. And why it was so disruptive? Because we all need to communicate, yes. But communication without trust is just information. Blockchain is changing the way we trust and changing the way we trust changes value because value is based on trust. Yes, on your subjectivity and your subjectivity is based on your past experience and your and, 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 and whatever. So if you can read something that you know the outcome it will occur, it reduces risk. So when we're changing trust, we are also changing something so relevant and so intrinsic of every human relation as communications, yes? So this is, if blockchain really succeeds, if, if, if this really succeeds, what we are really changing is one of the core elements of, of human relations. Mm. Relations where they did it, trust, we are doing it right now, no? And energy, it's in the core of everything in general, yes? Yeah, well, uh, I don't know where I read this, but I, I somewhere I read that the universe is comprised of nothing more than information and energy, that all of it is just, and if you think about it, energy equals mass times a constant, the speed of light squared. So, I mean, Einstein was telling us the same thing, that 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 that, that mass, that which we perceive to be you know, physical and real is nothing more than, you know, 99.9999% nothing. <laughs> we see that this is why I like this concept of energy. And this is what I think it lacks much people to do. Everything is energy. Mm. Everything. If there's no light, there's no life. I mean, no energy means no life. Energy mm. means life. It's, it's like this. Energy, life, no energy, no life. You turn on the light, you turn on the light, death. yes? So energy is life. Everything is related to energy, but people just won't go into that rabbit hole to understand everything else based on, on energy and evolution. And evolution has to do with energy because cause, cost, effect. And when I, I show you, later I show you the Labit comes. Actually, if you look for it, it's it's uh, brackets r like revolution, yes, but it's a small r in brackets before before the word evolution, yes. You find revolution, uh, la bitconf. You see the video of last year, and you see that even though it's a evolution of Bitcoin, you see that it has to do with what we've been talking. About. Very, very interesting. Well, I'll, I'll definitely try and find it and maybe put the link in the in the bottom as well. Hey, um, so I have a question for you. So outside of the Bitcoin world, is there some, a similar question to what I just asked, which is, is there some truth that you hold, again, outside of crypto, outside of our kind of little microcosm, right? Um, just generally speaking, is there something that, again, you see as being like a truth that most others are just like kind of blind to? Do you know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other space, any other things around that? Is it just globally speaking that, 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 that resonate with you? Yeah, you can use shoes up to different colors and it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm going to try that one. <laughs> <laughs> wear different color shoes right love it um hey rudolfo uh, you know on the on the topic of like evolution and uh information and you know all of this right i'm on there's another topic that i i think a lot about is which is like artificial intelligence um have you ever heard of this idea of the technological singularity that some people refer to and and this concept of like general artificial intelligence where i'm not talking about you know the tesla driving itself or google doing a search or even Bitcoin in some ways could be argued is AI. Um, I'm talking about, you know, something a little bit more advanced, like maybe 20, 30, 50 years out. I don't know what it is, but, but do you think about that at all? And, and I don't know, like, do you, how do you think that might impact uh, the future of humanity? Hmm. I have one concern. <clears throat> uh, sometimes I feel we are building like the supreme tool, yes, for trust, blah, blah. but also I feel we are building the Skynet, yes. We're building this, this way for computers to communicate among themselves and we're not understanding what they are saying. Yes, and being unable to change it mm. and able to stop it. Yes, so actually, a blockchain is a way, I mean, block cryptography itself, it's a way of speaking, yes, in a decentralized way. I, I mean, all, all the futurist movies yes that we've seen with the ones we we were born no i mean we we, we grow yes we grew uh, I, I guess you have my my age you have 30 30 something what's your age 30 something you said or you said me you 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 oh dude i'm i'm 41 huh oh, <laughs> it's just scary to say that <laughs> but yeah <laughs> you, you you just look much younger than me <laughs> yeah so, um, right what it is we all grew with these movies in which they destroy the, the, the main server. Yes, and all the robots and, and they die. No, mm -hmm. and, and all the interplanetary attacks like this uh, start dropping to the earth, and, and, and you destroy Skynet, and that's it. Blockchain, they didn't know about blockchain when they did those movies, yes, they didn't know about decentralized information about the way of of keeping it going and there's no head to cut yes so if you really ask me my we're talking 30 years from now no? my main concerns has to do with if ai gets much deeper in, in understanding in self self understanding discussing and creating yes they can also use then we for sure use these kind of tools to communicate and not being as able to avoid it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so, uh, when I talked to when I talked to Max recently and, about a similar topic, Max Kaiser, he was saying how he sees Bitcoin as this like kind of this war for energy actually against AI. And he believes that like the more, you know, resources and energy that we put towards Bitcoin, the less of it that's available for, I mean, I had a bit, a bit of a hard time kind of getting my head around it, but but he's, he, I love, uh, I love Max. He's, he's got some really interesting ideas. Um, Hey, Rudolfo, so very, this has been very fascinating, by the way. I, I, I also love the fact that like you and I, we met each other yesterday, yet just because we have a passion and kind of a affinity and connection through Bitcoin, we can just shoot the shit for, for you know, hours on end probably. Um, but but I, wanted to, I wanted to make sure that I'm respectful of your time and, and I wanted to ask you a couple things. So first of all, where can, oh, first of all, were there any questions that you wish I'd asked that I didn't? Was there anything else in your radar that, you know, that you wanted to maybe surface and kind of get out there? I just enjoy talking. Love it, love it. Okay, and then and then, what about if people? I, I know you've kind of mentioned it, but just one more time in terms of if people want to follow you, you mentioned your blogs, past conferences. Do they is there just labitconf.com? They go there, they'll find everything. Yes, actually, labitconf.com is this place to go. I love have other I mean, following me is not easy because I'm. I, I just don't express. I, I do not tweet. I do not Instagram. I do not. Telegram, it just, just do, yes? 
outspoken. Uh, but you can follow, even support projects that I host or I, I try to coordinate. Yes, David Kopf is one, Argentinian NGO, Bitcoin NGO, it's another one. Bitcoin Center of Espacio Bitcoin in Buenos Aires, it's another project. All these, you can look for them. Uh, La Bitcoineta, which is a band that travels Latin America, yes, talking about Bitcoin in small cities and one to one, very grassroots movement. Uh, it's another project I, 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 I've been behind. Blockchain for Humanity, yes, that supports and talks about, um, helps NGOs to go into, into blockchain. Um, Seed Pilots, Seed Pilots is a very, uh, actually, I would like to talk about Seed Pilots. Yes, Please. You look there. Um, during during the moon party, there will be a con uh, there is a ca scavenger hunt. Yes, you will find twelve coins floating in space. Each coin has a has a, some kind of clue, no, not a clue, like a riddle. Yes, if you solve the riddle, each riddle is solved with one of the bib twenty nine, uh, bib thirty nine words of a seed. Yes, so, so the twelve coins. Are one seed that hosts 1k in price. Yes, whoever finds the 12 words of that seed will get first the 1k. Yes, cool. This, <laughs> I, I'm running this game since March. Yes, uh -huh. it's called seedpilots.com. Seedpilots.com. Cool. And, and so, so the, the play is you need to find to solve these 12 readers. Sometimes the readers is watching a movie and guessing something from the movie, sometimes it's, it's, it's playing a song, sometimes it's understanding, doing a, a puzzle, fulfilling a puzzle, sometimes it's doing, uh, walking with a street view during 10 blocks, trying to find something in Kathmandu, yes? So it's, it's very fun, very, very original as a game, yes? It makes you do things. And people also, not in this case, but sometimes people get, needs to get a, a, to put up a costume, for example, for Halloween, we did, and if they put up a costume, they get some, some hints, um, or people needed to sing uh, along uh, some song, yes, or for example, I did for the 4th of July, I, I picked the, the independence, the declaration of independence, and I slightly changed to 12 words of the declaration. Yes, in this very hard to read declaration because it's, it's like wide and, and, and in mm. paper. So, and you had to read every single word and compare it with every single word of the real declaration. And see, it was not people, it was people. Yes, so changing the word and one of each of those 12 words were one of the words in the, in the scene. So, it's always different, it's always original, yes, but but it's a very nice game and it's a way of showing, at least not about the game itself, it's about of showing that Bitcoin could be fun if it's really fun, yes. You get the family, you get the little kids playing, you have videos of the little kids trying to solve or doing the puzzle, no? Mm. And, <clears throat> and grandpas and stuff like that. But it's, it's that you can certify that something that a price can be taken without having a third party certified. Yes, the price is there. You see the budget. You you see the one k. It's a wallet. You can see. It. Yes, whoever gets first is the winner. You don't need to certify that someone won. It's there. If someone gets the the the, the dollars, if someone takes the bitcoin from the chest, yes, it's because someone found the twelve words. That's it. You don't need a uh, I don't know how you say it in, in English, but like someone certifying that he is the winner. Yeah, the winner. no, I, I follow, I follow. It's cute. I got to try it. What is the website for that again? How do people find it? Seedpirates, seedpirates.com. Seedpirates, how do you spell that though exactly? The first couple words. S-E-E-D, seed. Seedpirates, ah, oh, got it. Oh, I like that. Seedpirates, okay, that's cute. Seedpirates.com, woo-hoo. 
I like that one a lot. Um, okay. Well, that's been great, Rodolfo. Uh, you know what? Again, man, I know you got the event coming up, so you're probably nothing but super busy. Um, I, I really want, you know, people to go check this out because like I've heard nothing but great things and I and I and I'm a big, you know, Bitcoin conference guy. And so excited about it next week. And any 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 last words before we maybe bring this? I hope up? people just get excited as you do. Yes, mm. and share and reshare and, re- and 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 share with others. Yes, about the conference, about the the huge, very nice lineup we had, and 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 the videos. It's very nice. It's like, oh, this has been done by someone in the Bitcoin industry. It's, you know, watch this video. Watch this trailer. I think it's unique. Rudolfo, with that said, before you end, do you wanna do you wanna maybe end this like whole interview off with uh, you sharing your screen with the what you share, showed me the the commercial, or do you wanna do it a different uh, time? This is not with screen. This is like just podcast, or or you with screen also. I'm not streaming, but I'm gonna take this video and put it on YouTube, yeah, put it on Twitter, yeah. put it on things. Yes, yes. Maybe what I'm saying right. is, I, I if you share your screen, uh, and then we can just. Uh, you know, yes. people can see kind of, uh, yeah, the, the promo, which I thought was very cute and interesting and fun. And the last one, which has to do with the movie, with the party. Please. love it i love it um i'm just gonna ooh, how do i kill the screen sharing here stop participant sharing okay cool so we're back to here okay man this was this was awesome this was great uh what a great way to kind of round it off and you know uh maybe once the dust settles for you uh if end of the year or whatever you want you want to do a follow-up and a little less maybe about you know storylines but more about you know philosophy news events whatever you want i'd love to do another one of these and um this has been super fun rodolfo sure for sure i enjoyed it too thank you excellent okay i'm going to bring this one to an end here